Hi everybody, I'm Kathleen with Tree Sisters Well of Creativity. Welcome. This is Creative Interviews and today we have the beautiful Susie Hale. Hi Susie. Hi Kathleen. Really wonderful to be sharing with you all the way from England. Really nice to, to finally have you know this opportunity. We've been uh, chit chatting a lot along the way, and I'm really excited to share the things that you're doing because they are very inspiring, very Tree Sisters connected. So I'm going to very earth connected and at the whole. <laughs> um, first thing I want to do is just you know let everybody know a few things about you. So Susan is a creator of Earth Day Sing for Trees since 2010. And some of you Tree Sisters may be familiar with Sing for the Trees, but uh, this is something that she had going on for a long time already, Earth Day, um, since 2010. And over 10,000 people in 45 countries have participated in this annual global event. Susan is also the author of Sacred Space, Sacred Sound, The Acoustic Mysteries of Holy Places, which is definitely worth your time. Susie was born in Mesa, Arizona, which we just chatted about, but she now lives in Malvern Hills in England with her husband, Ian. And this is her first, she has created her first juvenile fiction novel that we're going to talk about it's this is the the announcement to the world the announcement globally that um what not just the novel but what's happening with the the, the novel which we'll get into in a minute she's been helping people find their voices their to free find and free their authentic voices over 36 years as a singer as a singing teacher and a therapist, a music therapist, and sound healer. She uses vocal toning, toning. I need some right now. <laughs> some vocal toning, chanting, rounds, improvisation, guided imagery, which I love, movement, and storytelling in her work in both individual and group settings. So, Susie, there's a lot more to say, but I think, you know, that, that kind of gives us a gives us a lead in so that you know you can share with your own voice and we can have a conversation around it the first question i love to ask you though is when did you find tree sisters what drew you to tree sisters it's a triple triple question and um how are you involved now with tree sisters and we'll okay. start to talk about that yeah i don't know exactly how many years i'm going to guess it's probably been about five because i've been in the uk for eight years and i remember i think on facebook i heard about it and i i saw a video that claire did and it just went straight into my heart and straight <laughs> into my body and mm -hmm. thought this is it this is this is for me mm -hmm. uh, this Same is here. all of what i'm about and so it it not just spoke to me it sang to me uh. and so first i was just involved with making a donation and then i became a restorer made the commitment to make a monthly donation and which i'm really really happy about because mm -hmm. i yeah. every month I know I'm planting trees and that just really you know I feel tearful just saying that I know I'm doing that and not only do I know I'm doing that I know I'm doing that with this amazing group of women that we're doing it together yes yeah it's a great feeling that we're, we can do something that we know is actually making a difference yeah absolutely and the way that I've been involved is last year I got involved in doing uh, a workshop, a free workshop that I'm going to offer again, Finding Your Voice for the Earth Day Sing for the Trees. Yeah, and that's coming up on March 25th, right? Yes, March 25th from 8 p.m. to 9.15 um pm uk time uk and there'll be more information coming There's about that information on tree sisters nest about it 
Yeah. And so I did that and got very involved with the International Women's Day, Sing for the Trees. It just, you know, wow, it's something I'd already been doing and now Tree Sisters is doing it and it just is such a beautiful match and such a beautiful song we're singing together yeah. in harmony. I'm just so happy. So last year, January 1st, was talking to Pollyanna Darling about all of this and and then things really deepened yeah with talking with Pollyanna and just feeling so resonant with her and so heard by her and supported mm -hmm. and so we've been you know I've been involved ever since I'm, I'm very involved in the nest I've taken a role in the um, what do we call it? The saplings group, mm -hmm, the next yes. generation. Yeah, bringing up the young ones. It from time to time, posting things or posting songs or posting interviews or things yeah. relating to help girls now yeah. not only find their voices, but find their way into the world of nature and trees and exactly yeah and we're we're working our way towards that as an organization and it's really beautiful to have that idea planted and you know seeded and that we're nurturing it as it you know unfolds and it, it basically yeah. takes us on the direction that it wants to go exactly. and, and a lot of the work that you're doing um you know, with the the book and, and now with, you know, the other things that are happening with it that I want you to be able to announce um, is with, you know, and for our young, young women, young, young children of all, of all, <laughs> you know, male, female, but we're talking about the children, we're talking about our future. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's and, a big thing. I know, too, that I'm not alone with any of this. Yeah, I yeah, think no. that when I found Tree Sisters and found The Nest, yeah. there's this huge network that is so beautiful and so supportive. Yeah, now you're going to make me cry because <laughs> I feel that way about The Nest and I, I feel that way about all the sisters and, you know, my role is sort of a such a joy to me that to be able to see all of these projects that you all are bringing forward from your hearts um there it's unbelievable to be in my position to see and interact with all of these wonderfully creative but yet also meaningful like they're you know the reciprocity that is fueling these these yeah, ideas absolutely. it's just brings me to tears and i you know mm -hmm. it's my privilege really to to hold space for that in the nest and and i just want to you know make sure that i invite anyone who who does have a project an idea an inspiration even a, just a spark to know that you're not alone and yeah. that that you can come into the nest and that you know i you know will make sure that you're supported there but everyone will make sure that like everyone in there they they all just fall into that like supporting yeah. each other it's our culture it's the yeah. culture that's been created by tree sisters you know before i was there and um you know i just stepping into it is really just so natural and such a gift for me so i just wanted to put that out to everybody um but yes uh you've been holding that <clears throat> that group we created a group for it called saplings for our children for the you know the future um the path of tree sisters possibly to to do that work with children children are really doing some amazing work out in the world right yeah, now yeah talk about their voices being heard right susie absolutely yeah yeah so um do you want to move into talking about your new project okay yes i'd love to because this really is the first announcement of a project i've been working on with my collaborator and fellow tree sister susanna barefoot since 2009 when we met and it's based upon my book emma oliver and the song of creation so that book's been out probably about three years. And Suzanne and I, when we get together, it's so natural for us to share and to sing 
and to sing for trees and the, the tree near her walkway that we've sung for. And um, so I was telling Susanna when I first met her about this book I was writing at the time. And I told her the story and she just started to cry. <laughs> oh. And she took me back to her home and played this piano piece, wanting to share some something of her own life. And I said, I hear words to that. Mm. Do you mind when I go back to the States, if you send it to me, I'll, I'll work on words. So I did, and that was our first song. And for a long time, that was just what it was. I said, oh, I see this as a movie and that's the song when the credits are. Oh my gosh, that, that gives me chills. That gives me chills. Let me, <clears throat> let me, you continue to talk, but I'm gonna share our screen so that uh, we can see the book and we can see some of the, some of the pictures we have here. But I mean, that meeting is. Uh, that meeting is, was, <laughs> was fated. It was a meeting that really, um, was something that the trees wanted. The trees wanted Susanna and I to meet, and the trees want Susanna and I to work on this musical, and we have 22 songs now. Wow, and, and we're going to listen to one today, everybody. We're going to listen to one in, in a little bit here. Of 22, I, I don't think I even realized you had 22, 22 songs. 22 songs, and I'm working on the rough draft of the libretto. I'm almost finished with my rough draft of two acts of this play. So I want to just read you very quickly the synopsis of this. This is the book, but also the musical. Somewhere deep in the forest, the ancient spirit of the trees summon us. They call us to listen to open our hearts. Auma, the great mother tree, is dying in the shining land. Where is the girl? Where is Emma Oliver? We are at the 11th hour, but there is still time. We must find her. She must remember she is the only tree singer left who can sing the song of creation before it's too late. But there's a problem. Emma can't sing. She must face her fears and find her voice before she can save the great mother tree. Mm, that goes right into my heart. <laughs> right? You know, I feel, you know, I want to be that little girl just sitting at your knee, you know? It, it feels so, such a blessing. For you. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah, I mean, Pollyanna, I know, can sing. <clears throat> it's also, it's actually been a dream of mine <laughs> for my whole life almost. Like, just to, you know, be able to sing and, and that, you know, I'm Emma. I'm afraid. Yes, there's, there's well, we all are. A Emma. lot of us are, right? Yeah. Are. yeah. It's my story, but it's also a story that's universal. And yeah. the themes in it are about saving trees, finding your voice, and family and ancestral healing. Yeah, yeah. Let's and the hope of this musical is to initiate the complex dialogue we have with these complex issues. Yeah. How do we find our voices and how do we help children find their voices and break through their fears and how do we talk about climate change and how do we talk about things that are going on with trees? Yeah, absolutely, like setting a stage literally for new conversations that are needed right now. Sure, there of the girl hugging a tree is a girl that I know and she looks like Emma Oliver in my mind. Yeah. That's about what Emma Oliver, you know, that kind of thin, long-haired, ponytailed girl uh, who, who goes to the trees. So mm -hmm. we've talked a little bit about finding your voice and that's been my career as a music therapist, mm -hmm. helping women find and free their voices and tell the story of their voices. I have helped thousands of women find their voices and heal from trauma. 
And so it's really important for me to tell this story of ancestral healing, of the ways that mothers have their voices taken away. Grandmothers in, in my book and musical, Maisie, the grandmother, has lost her voice. It was stolen by Esmeralda, the evil Ivy Deva, who would just as soon all the trees die so she can take over. <coughs> So her mother, her, her daughter, Emma's mother, decided she just wanted to be normal. I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to become like my mother. I just, I just want to be normal. So we all know that place, and maybe we've been there too, where we have kind of a fixed smile. Yeah. And we can we become very sweet. And we become, and, and, and we be, our voice, you know, is back here in our throat. Because we're afraid of the full power yeah. of the emotion that's in our bodies mm -hmm. with the legacies that so many of us have had with alcoholism or incest or abuse. And even if those things haven't happened, Everybody's got a story about their voice yeah. where it was a teacher that said, oh, you just mouth the words when we come to this. Yeah. Um, I'd actually love to have everyone who's watching this to, they got, you know, this far into this point to write a little bit, just like a, a sentence or two and share your story. Just talking about it, just hearing you talk yeah. about it. Um is actually a, there's a healing property to that and it, is. it i can feel it coming up for me and you know i i have ancestral healing and i have not you know being embarrassed to sing on stage it's it's exactly. much more it's, it's much much more than that because the voice is fundamental to who we are yeah it's our vibration it's it's the sum total of all of our life experiences yeah. it's our passion it's everything. It's there. And we're so afraid to be emotional, even though women are supposed to be the sensitive emotional ones. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of this animal in there. <laughs> the that, wild that one. Comes out, you know, through sound. Yeah. And yeah. So when I do work with people finding their voice, I work with vocal toning, which is working with breath and sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for me to tell this story and to bring it forth as a musical, not only to help others, but I don't have children, yeah. so I don't have grandchildren. So this mm -hmm. is, I'm the last branch of this tree. Well, not and anymore. That, <laughs> not anymore. And when that session with my great grandfather, I told him I'm the last branch and I offer you a peace branch. Mm. So incredibly powerful. You know, just so a little this again. Yeah, yeah. Like this is a big I'm gonna yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um I'd like to dive into this personally with you and I hope that others do as well. Um, for now, I want to, let's talk about how this came to be a musical or how this, you know, how this is starting to happen for, you know, I know from, from meeting Susanna, but then from, you know, you've had people who are interested in actually showing it, right? Well, not yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, sure, I'm sure they are. They just haven't let you know yet. Yeah, nobody knows <laughs> that it's happening. Oh uh, well, people know that we're working on this. Oh, we got to get this out. When you say oh, I'm writing a book or I'm working on a musical, you know, yeah, yeah, that's a. But we're actually looking for emissaries. We're oh, looking, I love we're kind of hoping that people listening will help bring this vision forward at yeah. least by by energizing it by holding the vision of it by holding yes. the dream of it and Absolutely. maybe know people that are uh, involved we we see this really it's going to be whatever it's going to be it has a life of its own 
but we're seeing it as something that could be in schools. Yeah, absolutely. That it could be that, that children themselves perform it. It could be that it's community theater. And so it might be adults and a child, a girl, a few boys who are, are in this. Uh, it could go all the way to Broadway. It could go all the way to the West End. You know, it doesn't have a limit on it. At the same time, I feel like for the first time in my life, I'm letting go of an expectation oh. of what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's got its own life and it will direct you. And, exactly. you know, we can put, I mean, this, that's how powerful this is, this work is. And, and to be honest, a lot of the work that's be, that's happening within, um, I think it's almost like a creative portal that we've created through Three Sisters. And everybody is doing the work guided by Gaia, guided by yeah, the tree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that gives me chills to think of, you know, and at the same time, <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, you know, I, I hope, you know, you, you can give us all the information where, where I post this is how anyone can get, you know, become an emissary. I mean, I'm definitely in, I think you know that already. And, um, you know, any other ways that we can do this? I mean, I, I'm sure that once it's completed, that we can bring it to our communities and theater through you yeah, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it could be there's um, a teacher out there who, mm -hmm. you know, is a theater teacher or works with kids and might have a way of bringing this as an idea to be performed. Yeah, get funding for it and all sorts of possibilities. But I entirely, um, like, I, I just, I think it's just one of the most powerful things I've heard in a really long time. Mm. And, um, you know, the story, but you're, you know, the, the way that the story came to you, but the ancestral healing that's really the roots of all of it is so needed. And it also is connecting with the trees at the same time. You know, it's that, know. It, it, it's... it's <laughs> I'm going to show um, show a couple more pictures and see what we have here. Um, I have a couple others that I just want to share, and we could talk about things and and um, you know anything else you want to share, just pop right in. But I wanted to let you know. So here's yeah. a few, few of the kids. It's a little blurry picture that I yeah, that I have. <laughs> the school that I went to here in Melbourne, and um, they were just so sweet. It was actually about 40 kids it was two classes yeah and this was afterwards and some of them gathered around to have their picture taken yeah i love seeing their face all of their faces yeah. i mean and each one of them are just so you know so different like they each have their own possibilities to like it just yeah, yeah see what's being held up and here's you know here's you and your beautiful this is your yew tree yeah you out of the yew tree yeah the yew tree Sorry. The story has tree davis in it. Yeah. So the tree davis are appear the way they've been named by somebody. So mm. Emma's tree is Annie Oakley, and when she appears popping out of the tree, she looks like the old cowgirl from the old west. Yeah, I love the Annie Oakley story. I've always loved that story. <clears throat> Me with another yew tree on Earth Day many years ago with my earth flag you're so cute it, it's such a gorgeous tree i could you could live in there yeah this is the much markle yew tree in herefordshire in england oh okay i'm sure a lot of people are familiar, familiar with that beautiful this was an earth day sing for the trees and we were taking prayer flags and blessing them and we were about to tie that around the trunk of one of the ash trees we were honoring the ash tree one year because of the ash dieback. Yeah, and I, there, are, there is some work happening with the ash trees um, right now, too, with w one of our other tree sisters, Azul. Mm. So she's doing some grieving work. And oh, some right. Stuff. Yes, yes. I signed mm -hmm. up for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're all doing this work together. Like you said, it's it's really powerful that, you know, one of us where one of us leaves off, the other one is picking it, picking up the yeah, branch. Yeah, now this picture 
uh, was the first year in 2010 that I did it. And this is a group of people in Atlanta, Georgia, in somebody's backyard near a stream. Mm, and yeah. I'm glad you chose this one because they usually have 50 to 100 people come mm -hmm. and they've done something every year. Uh, now, I think they're moving the date and focusing more on plant healing rather than just trees. Yeah, but, but you, you planted it. <laughs> they invited me to do a workshop there. Right. I got to go to this place. Yeah, you, you, you travel so many places. I think the next one, and you're planting these seeds and then they're growing. So you really will not, ha not have any idea of the effect you're having on all of these people and trees and <laughs> yeah this is uh italy yeah or, wow. wait, wait a minute no this is portugal portugal okay but uh one of the women there i met in italy it looks like a dance crew <laughs> yeah or theater crew, I suppose, also. They just look like they're really comfortable. This is, again, another one of my kind of fuzzy, I apologize, pictures that I grabbed, but um, you, you teach the workshop. And where I are you? I teach the workshop on International Women's Day. It's a Finding Your Voice workshop. Wonderful. So you can do griefs, gr griefs. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody needs any voice work here, right? Um, mm, uh, groups or and individual work, right? Yeah, I have done. I should say I'm approaching my 70th birthday and I'm pretty much retired except for this musical and writing and, and things like this with Tree Sisters. Great. Okay. I get it. Yeah, you've been, how long have you been uh, doing this again? For 36 years, <laughs> yeah, at least maybe 37 now. Wow, amazing! Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that was the that was the last one that I have here, and I'm just going to leave it up for a little bit. But so the thing that I, you know, I'd really like to do now is to um, share your song. But before we get to that, if there's anything else that you would like um, to to say, um, I, I was going to play the song earlier, but it, this I conversation has been going. just so, and I know it's no, you never it's say in awesome. order. <laughs> like I try to make an order. That's a laugh, you know. Like I, it happens how it happens in the in absolutely the right way. Yeah, um, just to say uh, again about Susanna Barefoot, my collaborator. She's a pianist and a composer and has a background also as a sound healer and she's also a tree sister and it's been so easy to work with Susanna mm. so almost effortless yeah. every time we get together we it gets furthered yeah. and sometimes she's the one who puts the music to my lyrics sometimes I come up with a melody that she then arranges Mm -hmm. um, but she she all she always has this way of tuning in mm. in just the right way and just having the right touch and we we're very honest with each other too it's not like oh that's great Susanna or oh yeah. that's great Susie. right it's like well I'm not so sure about this or I wondered about or I think that needs a little um, you know bit more uh, as we say in England, welly a little bit more oomph. Yet. Um, yeah. And I just, I just love her to bits and I, lo I, I love her piano playing and I love what she has done mm. with Emma. And she's had a background working with schools doing musicals as well yeah. in her past. Match made in heaven. <laughs> it's match made in heaven. Yeah. yeah. It really it's 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 a tricky business too, you know, co-creating together and especially in a in a creative way. But co-creativity is one of the things that I believe in um also very much. Uh from my work yeah. with Barbara Marks Hubbard when I worked with her, we talked a lot about working as kind of co-creative beings to evolve the planet, to consciously evolve the planet. Yeah. Because, you know, there again we start to look at the different ways that we, you know, don't allow space for the other. 
or have this comp yeah. competitive, you know, uh, things yeah. that come in to our work together that that don't give us the fullness of either one or the, the what the product is together. So uh, there again, um, your work with Susanna and I'm sure how she feels about you is it's equal um, is also evolutionary. It's it's also something that is create you know creating a ripple effect of women working with women or just people exactly working with and it's all what true sisters is about too yes this non-competitiveness and really listening to one another at the same time being honest with one another yes and sparking one another and supporting one another and crying together and laughing yeah. together yeah just being as real as we can and you know uh being open and vulnerable like you said and exposing the things that we normally used to hide you know and yeah. i can tell you that all the way through to the core of the team of tree sisters it's true so um that to me was important once you know i was with tree sisters as as a you know a uh, donor and then as a volunteer and it was really great to find once I became part of the team that it's straight into the core, or is yeah. this is the culture that you see? Who am I, a girl who can't sing? What does it mean? Is this all just a dream? Everyone expects so much of me i have no voice do i have a choice must i go into the shining land i feel alone will someone take my hand i don't know the reason why i was chosen i feel frozen but it's up to me emma emma take heart take heart take heart take your part i believe in you i believe in you I am here for you. I believe in you. Emma, take heart. Sing to the great mother tree. She is dying. She needs me. Sing your song. What if I do it wrong? you know in your heart you can sing the song of creation i'm actually really glad that it didn't sound good before because i love that we can um do this together like this and watch you belt it out. <laughs> <laughs> so the belting art part was Uncle Elf, yeah. Emma, the 11 year old who has to sing for the trees, who has no voice, who has no confidence, mm -hmm. and Uncle Elf who hears her and who supports her and encourages her to take her place and sing to the dying great mother tree. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, you're amazing first of all to to do the two voices so clearly i felt oh just that fear and the tininess and mm -hmm. and the question and then the strength you know but also mm -hmm. the love for her like that i felt like he he has for her i love it in so many ways i just can't wait to hear all the other <laughs> i can't believe there's 22 songs I, I mean and the whole i could just vision it on the stage and I really know already, but I hope even more that it will be spread far and wide, that I know that it needs to, and I know that it will change so many little girls and big girls' lives, you know, both. Yeah, mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles oh, and boys. Oh, you're really not just girls, you're absolutely right. It's just, you know, it's yeah. a voice in general, and 
Oh, wow. I'm so happy we did this today. And oh, I am too. <laughs> and I, you know, I have a request as soon as you have like a really good, you know, after you bring it into the studio and do all that kind of thing, if you want to come back, we'll do another little oh, interview. Thank you. And yeah, show great. That would, be, that would be wonderful. And in the meantime, I'll put your website link so you can get some more emissarias and um, below if anybody wants to just put a brief you know just a brief sentence or two about where maybe you feel your either your present and so you know voices is blocked or if if you could relate to that part about the ancestry um, I know I will I will add something there after I put all this together all right so I'm gonna I'm going to um, say goodbye to everybody out there and I and I want to thank you so so very much Susie for being open to her guidance and for um, following it and you know trusting it and bringing us this beautiful gift you're welcome Kathleen thank you